Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So, apologies for the delay in videos this month. It's just been very stressful and hectic moving house, and also it's been a bit of settling in process here within the workshop. But today I want to share with you a fairly quick and simple video I'm hoping, which you've actually seen here on the channel before. So, a while back I made one of these machinist's hammers, and to be honest, I was fairly new into machining and as you can see the offset of the hammer is a bit different and it's just quite a poor finish. Pretty good hammer but not the most prettiest. So today I want to change that. In front of me here I've got an array of fairly exotic materials which I want to turn into a pretty fancy machinist hammer if I'm being honest. It's going to be one of the most yeah, over the top let's say machinist hammers. So this hammer is going to have a bronze and copper end on it. The main head of the hammer is going to be made with some Damascus steel as from the last video. I actually think Damascus steel is a really good metal. And the main handle is going to be made with some EN24T high carbon steel. So got a nice mix of materials there to get on with turning down in the lathe. So let's head straight over there and start with that. So starting off with the head of the hammer, hopefully this should be quite a fairly straightforward operation. I'm going to start off by facing both the ends, drilling that to accept an M12 tap and tapping both of these. That will then allow me to attach the faces of the hammer and after that just have to take this over to the mill and centre drill and drill out to accept the handle. So get on with that. To begin with then, we start off by facing the Damascus steel. This is actually a really important step in making sure that the centre drill and drills go in straight after this. From there I begin by centre drilling and drilling out to accept for an M12 thread. So this included going all the way up to a 10.2mm drill bit, which I find goes into the Damascus steel really nice. From there I try power tapping which let's just say it didn't go too well the tap started spinning so i finished it off by hand after it got in fairly straight from the power tapping operation and with that being done that was the first operation done on the damascus steel from there i just flipped the part over and repeated the process to get a m12 thread in both sides of the damascus steel which will be the hammer head for the hammer after this we have to move on to making the faces for the hammer. So I started with the copper as I thought this was going to be the most awkward to machine and it turned out to be exactly that. Initially when turning down the copper everything seemed to be going really well. Um, I started doing like a fairly light pass, 0.5mm here you can see turning down the copper and that went pretty well. But I soon found out that the lathe maxed out at about between 1 and 1.5mm depth of cut. Not because of the power of the lathe, but actually because of the material. Any deeper than 1.5mm and it turned out that the copper was actually sticking to the tip of the lathe tool and just getting a really poor surface pin finish. So I stuck to doing a 1.5mm depth of cut and turned this down all the way to 30 millimeters which is going to be the face of the hammer head so once we'd achieved the 30 mil i turned down a small portion and chamfered that to accept the m12 thread and then from there i power fed my die in to make the m12 I found doing this in copper was actually really easy. There was no, not a lot of force back from the die and it came out with a really nice looking thread. Super happy with this. And just as a quick test fit, just try that into the hammer head itself and threads into there really nice. Final procedure on this now, just parting this off before doing the final works on this to make this a finished part. Mm -hmm. 
to finish it off I stuck it back in the Damascus hammerhead using it a bit like a collet and just turned that down on the lathe putting a chamfer on there and facing it off. So with that copper end now all machined wow, it fits in there lovely. There we go and the contrast between those two metals already look really cool. So next thing to do now is recreate this part but out of out some bronze. So let's crack on with it. As I've already done this part once, doing it a second time was really easy as I knew the operations which I had to do and it turns out this bronze machined it a lot easier than the copper. Although the chips were flying everywhere, I didn't have the same problem as the tool grabbing into the work. So again, I turned down the biggest diameter to 30 millimeters before turning down a small shoulder section to M12 to accept the thread that we'll be putting in that. And the same sort of thing, put the thread in, part it off, and put a chamfer and face that part off again. So now we've got both faces on the head of the hammer, I now need to drill a centre hole in here and tap that. So to do so we'll be heading over to the mill and taking full advantage of my Hamer gauge to locate the centre of this part. Using the Hamer gauge then makes finding the centre line of any workpiece really easy. So all I've done was zero off on both sides of my jaw and then using the half function on the DRO I managed to find the centre line of the hammer head. And from there I repeated the procedure to find the centre of the hammer head. So the reason I've done this with the two faces in is because I wanted to get a true representation of where the centre is including the faces. So touching off on both sides using the half function on the DRO again gave us an accurate point of the centre mark. From there I plunged in with an M16 end mill. This is because I wanted to give a recess so the hammer handle would sit in there flush. And by using this gives me a really nice flat bottom to drill against which makes drilling a lot easier and stops any drill wander. So from there it was a fairly basic procedure using a centre drill and then drilling out to again except for the M12. Knowing how this Damascus steel drills, it's actually a really nice operation to do. But this is where things went wrong. Deciding to power tap into the workpiece, yeah, you'll see what happens right now. Well, that was a bit of a bum clencher. So as you've just seen, I was doing the final operation on the hammerhead, power tapping down, and lo and behold, the workpiece decided to lift up out of the vise. Not ideal. But luckily, I managed to save this, take it over to the bench and just finish it off with a hand tap, because luckily it had only gone in about half a turn. And we've now got a machinist hammerhead threaded, ready to accept a handle. So the next component we need to make and finish off this is the handle. So we're gonna be heading back over to the Harrison M300 lathe where we'll be turning down some EN24T to make the handle. When it comes to making the handle then, I'm gonna start off with the threaded end which will screw into the hammerhead. This way, if I make any errors, I can just part this off and start again. So the hammer handle itself needs to have an M12 thread on it and also a 16mm boss which is going to sit into that recess which we put into the hammer head just a few minutes ago. So being EN24T this doesn't machine too bad other than the fact that every now and again you do get some of these stringy chips. That's probably because I've not quite got my chip load right but it's not too bad to machine other than that.
So once we're happy that we've turned this down to 16 millimeters, which will be the reference that sits into the hammer head, I then begin to turn down the M12 portion, which will be running a die down to make the threaded part of this. So 16 down to 12 mil was a fairly quick operation and got that down very quickly. So after that, I began the operation of putting the threads in. I've been using this power threading method now for a fair few months and I find it really good on this big lathe. Making sure that the lathe doesn't bite when you first engage is the most important thing and then from there I'm just running the die down with a really slow speed on the lathe and hovering over the foot brake ready to stop that. So screwing the hammer head on itself seems to screw on really well and that recess sits in there very nice. So happy that that part's all done now, we can move on to the cosmetic parts and to start with I'm going to be turning down a large taper on this handle. So to do so I was using my cross slide set at a 5 degrees angle and I was just moving that backwards and forwards just to elongate this taper. What I was aiming for as well when doing the taper is I wanted to blend it in really nice with the recessed boss at the head end and I think I managed to achieve that. So from there I plunged in with a chamfer tool just to give some nice grooves on the handle itself, more of a cosmetic thing than anything. Finally then I needed to part off the handle but not before we started getting some chatter. So I decided I didn't want to wreck my parting blade, so I took it over to the bandsaw and just quickly cut that off. The bandsaw made really light work of this being such a thin blade, rather than using that two mil parting blade. Finally then, not quite happy with the way the handle ended up. I wanted to give this more of a cosmetic feel so using some shims to make sure I didn't damage the part I began to face it off in the free jaw chuck and I sort of decided I wanted to have a rounded end on this so as you can see I tried a few methods the first method here I tried turning down a small step section which I was hoping I could then round off with a file I wasn't too happy with the results on that, it looked really chunky, didn't really blend in that well. So I tried another method which I've seen online before and that is by using the power feed on the lathe and slowly winding out with the cross slide you can get a much more consistent rounded end and that turned out really well. So i done that, filed it off, sanded it off off camera and we ended up with a really nice finished end to the hammer handle. There we have it then guys, the new machinist hammer is all completed and I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. There were some metals on here that I've never machined before, especially the copper turned out to be really awkward to machine, it just kept wanting to stick to the lathe tool. But that's all finished now and it's looking really nice actually. Only thing I might do off camera, maybe as a YouTube short, is I might acid etch the handle. So although it won't go like the Damascus steel, it should go like a really nice black colour. So that may be something for me to consider. Well, that about sums up this video today. Um, I'm actually off to Denmark next week for a work trip. So there'll probably be a slight delay again in videos. Really sorry about this, but 
once I'm back, that should be all the sort of delays and videos there should be for the rest of this year. And another really exciting thing that I'm going to announce in the next video is... Oh, the channel's actually got a sponsor. So in the next video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the new sponsorship on the channel, all the stuff they've offered me to sort of show to you guys what they're all about. And I think they're actually a really good company for the home hobbyist machinist. So that's why we've teamed up together. Other than that, guys, have a good couple of weeks and I'll see you in the next video.